tell you the truth here. Somebody check this. Yeah, I'll check it. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulhi al-jameen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-jama'een wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdiyahu la shirik kala wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh amma ba'd This is a <clears throat> continuation in the famous book Tafsir Jalalay by the two great Imams Jalal al-Din 
al-Bahali al-Allama al-Imam Salam al-Din al-Bahali wa kathalik al-Allama al-Imam Salam al-Din al-Siyuti rahimahum Allah ta'ala so they inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala will actually take the physical tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha previously we talked a little bit about biography, a little bit. Qita min sirratihima, just a glimpse, just a, like we said, a drop in the bucket about the two imams. And we didn't do any justice, to be honest with you, astaghfirullah. The life of those two, a glimpse of the life of the two imams, as, as they both were imams. Then that's a whole like maybe weekend seminar, believe it or not, subhanAllah. And we said again, <coughs> one of the reasons that ulama of the past and the present, after their time up until now, <coughs> refer this tafsir because it's one volume, first of all. Most tafsir or extensive beyond one volume. The second reason, because of the benefit in the tafsir as it relates to and then they keep it moving. It's not too extensive. Just what you need to know about certain aspects of the meaning of that word or that I. Number three, because of the benefit as it relates to the i'rab, the <coughs> sense of structure, very important when you're talking about understanding the Quran. Number four, the <coughs> very rare but <coughs> uh, existing uh, Quran explained by Hadith is most of the explanation of this Quran is by Quran, Quran by Quran. But there are some parts where hadith or reference. Also, number five, because of the issue of the knowledge of the Qur'an, the knowledge of the Qur'an, the different <coughs> ways that the Quran was revealed or the different types of Quran, and we'll get more in detail to that meaning. Different types of recitation versus is it considered a different type of Quran. And then you have also min asbab ma al asma'i wa sifat. Number six, because of the benefit regarding the names and attributes. <clears throat> the benefit as it relates to riwayat al Ismailiya, the different narrations from the people of the book. And you have different, number seven, usul, different principles that have been explained throughout this tipsir. So you get a lot in this one single volume of tipsir. And although there are some khalin wa akhta, yani, بنسبتي التعطيل والتعريف يعني نعم denying partially or totally or changing or having some type of authorization when it comes to the sifat the description the af'al the action of Allah تبارك وتعالى وأسمائه in his names they were imams and what we have to learn to do is respect the knowledge of his people. And if there's something that they err in, who doesn't err? Rather than Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a Sadiq wal Masdu, the one who was described by firstly his Lord <coughs> as being truthful, trustworthy. <laughs> He's trustworthy in what Allah gave him, and he's trustworthy in his tongue. Just like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud called a sadiqu wal masduq. A sadiqu, naam, he is truthful. Ala fitlu, 
methodical and the the sifatul the description of the one who's doing the action, a sadiqul. But this to sadiqul and kadiqul, the opposite of sadiqul is kadiqul. Sadiqul and babasidik, from the perspective of truthfulness. He is the one who's doing the action of truthfulness. A sadiqul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What nasduq alladhi sadra minhu. What comes from him, it is, yani, trustworthy. Wahua Nasduk. Now, Allah Nasdul described our Prophet as that, and that being the case, that being the case, then we know that the Prophet وسلم, only told us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him. <coughs> that Messenger sallallahu wa ta'ala wasallam, he taught us. <coughs> That if someone is a hakim, hakim, he's doing the judge, the ruling, the uh, <clears throat> issue of fatawa, questions and answers, he's doing the issue of you know, istindat, bringing from those different sources a type of derivative, he's bringing istidlal, he's bringing and showing what serves as the evidence? He's bringing mother istikhraj, <coughs> extracting from. He's doing the job of an alam. If you rewrite in either shtahida al mushtahid, the mushtahid, the one who strives with his knowledge to come up with a solution based upon knowledge. The Prophet said, either asaba. Fellahu Ajrani. He gets two rewards when he's right. Two rewards when he's right. There's nowhere in the dunya you get two rewards for being right. So Allah. Except the hakim or a mujtahid a'ala. Ajrun li niyatihi mabani ala al-ilm wal ikhlas. One reward because it's built upon sincerity and knowledge based. Wa ajrun ala annahu wa fatu sawab. And he himself, he executed the matter, he got it right. Didn't miss the mark. When akhta, the prophet said, and if he makes a mistake, falahu ajr. Naam, falahu madha, what? An ajr. He gets a one reward. Why? Because he had the tools. He was in his lane. That's his profession. So he gets credit from Allah just because of the loftiness of that profession and he's qualified. That's why they said if somebody tries to do that, do what? Judge regarding the religion, speak regarding the religion, answer questions regarding the religion, bring out benefit or say what this means or what that means or what this could, you know, serve as a purpose of. He does all those things is not his job. But what Allah saw up and he happens to get it right. He happens to get it right. They said still he's in sin. Why? Because that's not his job. You would think, well, he got it right. How can he not, you know, Get a reward, at least like one reward. He's not the scholar who gets two, but he doesn't get anything. What I, what I miss, what I shake, not even a half a reward. Not. Let who ask him because he did a sin by doing something that's not his job. For they said that he's not qualified or from those people. So, this when you talk about scholarship with regards to Imam. And any other scholar from the past and the present, their good outweighs the bad, their bad is not our issue. If their good outweighs the bad, we take the good like we're commanded, even if it comes from the kafir. If it's good, we have to take it. If it's correct, we have to take it. I'm not a shatim for talking fee as far as slander or discrediting. 
أو ماذا يعني احتقار لهؤلاء وبذل من ذلك وأعظم من هذا ماذا بارك الله فيكم worse than that what تقاطع تهاجر تبعد تفسق بويكان ديمن دبي open sentence الله المستعان Demon them to be people of innovation. Demon them to be people that, you know, you stay away from. That's not our place. As Rabbi Salaam said, they get ajrun wahid li akhtaihim for their mistake. Wa la'alla al-ummat al-islami yalfa'una wa yastafiduna min akhtaihim khayran wa akthar min suwabina. Maybe the Ummah, maybe the Islam, the Deen of Allah, and its people benefit more from their mistakes than anything we can get right. And Allah bears witness. So this is why those that have those mistakes, those issues with Asma wa Sifat and some other issues because this was the environment they were in Amani. Jalilani. Lidin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were two great imams of this thing. Two great imams of this thing. So much so, subhanAllah. You're talking about 791 hijri. A man is born. 791 hijri. SubhanAllah, that's a long time ago. We in 1444. 1444. That's almost. Half the time of the time that Islam has been on this earth, they existed way back then. People were still doing explanation, doing correction, doing elucidation, doing uh, other works based off of this tipsir. SubhanAllah. Amazing. So let's Allah and Yirahimu alayhima bi rahmatun wasi'ah. Ask Allah. To shower a mercy upon them that's <clears throat> insurmountable and that is magnificent. When us Allah and you desire home, ajrun wafran lil Islam wal Muslimin to give them abundant reward and a abundant credit for what they left for Islam of the Muslims. I mean. And we said we're taking this ta'liq, this commentary on this tafsir from Murkif tafsir out of Egypt and Scandinavia. They are and he, uh, very famous for doing these ta'liq of different books. They are qualified. And there are many other people that gave explanation, but I, I like this particular explanation. And you can refer to it online, the audios or live on the YouTube, their books are published. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qal Imam Jalal al-Din al-Muhalli. Rahimahullahu ta'ala. We already mentioned his position and what he says about the Al-Fatiha. We already mentioned those benefits regarding if it's Mecca or Medina. We already mentioned that some scholars say that it's the opposite of what the Imam said. We also said the strongest evidence is that it is Meccan, meaning before the Hijra. We already said that Al Fatiha, some scholars have said that it was revealed twice before the Hijra, making it Mecca. And after the Hijra, once they're in Medina, making it Medini. Some said it was revealed once, but what was revealed in Al Medina is from the Fada'i, talking about its virtue. And we said many Mashaykh uh, 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 of the past have their opinions about this, but Imam al Mahali chose what's Yali Marjuh, what is strongest and what is most likely that is that it is Meccan, before the Hijra. We also mentioned 
that the Imam mentioned that if you take the position that the Basmillah is part of the seven, then you have to make the seven ayat siratul ladin and amta alayhim ghayr al maghdubi alayhim wala dhalin. But if you don't, and that you take the position that the Basmillah is there, but it's not part of the seven, then the seven ayat is. <coughs> And there's a great fit regarding that, a great understanding and a great a great principle from the principles of Islam, and that is you can't make it eight, it has to say six, seven. You have to make it seven the number, it cannot be eight, and this is what the Imam mentioned. We also said that uh, the Al-Fat has many names mentioned from amongst them Umm Al-Kitab, the origin or the mother of the book of Salah, as in the Hadith of the Prophet, Allah called it as Salah. It's also called uh, Al-Waqi' Naam, yani, uh, <coughs> that which yani, um, occurs. And also, we have the meaning of uh, 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 the treater or the healer, and like this, has many names and fact. Now, inshallah, we go to the actual tafsir, ayah by ayah, wa billahi musta'an wa alayhi, yani, to a filmna or a lady musia, and we seek Allah's help in this barakat. Smilahu Rahman Rahim. Imam al Nahali, he said, Smilahu Rahman Rahim, alhamdulillah. Jumlatan Khabriya. Jumlatan Khabriya. So it says, Alhamdulillah is Jumlatan Khabriya. Jumlatan Khabriya, in the simple terms, mean it's a sentence that gives you information about something. And here the subject matter is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's important to know. Alhamdulillah yani, is a Jumla. It is a sentence. Alhamdulillah. Jumlat. Yeah, jumla to khabriya. It is a sentence that gives you information about your Lord. He said, Fusida biha fana ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It particularly he gave the meaning fana ala Allah to give yani praise. Fana ala Allah. And you'll find that some used to say uh Hamid Allah wa fana alayhi. Hamid Allah Praise Allah wa thana alayhi, which means yuthna alayhi bi khayr, to speak about Allah in a good way. This is the meaning of thana alayhi, which the opposite is to yani, say something bad about Allah. So here, yani, the meaning of alham with Imam al-Hali, it is jumul khabriyan, wa huwa thana ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is to say or to think or to feel any good about Allah is called Tana. And he's given this as the meaning of Alham. Many scholars say that Alham means Tana ala Allah to make or to give an expression or a good word about Allah to Baraka wa Ta'ala. He said, Dian Allah Maliku li Jami'i min al Khal. Dian Allah Maliku. And that's because Allah is Maliku. Maliku. Yani the one who owns Jami al Khalq. So here, this is very important. This is the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Shaykh is saying, mentioned Alhamdulillah. Limada, Leanna huwa thana alayhi, because it's um, suitable for Allah. To say that about himself, يعني الحمد لله ولا لغيره, and no one else can take that يعني type of description of a praise by saying الحمد. And second, هو يعني الملك يعني جميع خلق. He is the one who owns everything that's created. Therefore, the good statement, the good thought, the. Good actions are due to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is due that type of praise.
praise Sana Allah wa huwa alham. He said, out yustahiku liya'madu. Or you could say that Allah yustahiku means he has the right yani, to be praised. By default, he should be praised. Limada, lannahu maliku jami a makhluk. Malik jami yani makhlukat. He is the one who owns everything. How could he not be praised? He said, Allahu alamu ma'budi biha. Allahu, Allahu alamu ma'bud biha. Alamu. Yani this is the type of noun. Allahu alamu ma'bud biha. And that's why they say, la ilaha illallah. Yani la ma'bud biha. Because ma'bud, something, yani alaha, something that you worship. From Allah al ilaha. And from that, Allah, yani mustahiqa li ibadah. So these are terms in the Arabic language that when you read in the Surah, a person must understand. He must understand. This helps you to understand the other terms that's connected to Allah wa ta'ala. He said, Rabbil alameen. Rabbil alameen. Rabb. Now, al alamin It's a ayy malik jami' al khalq. Malik jami' al jami' al khalq. He is the owner of everything that is created. This is another meaning of Rabbul alamin ayy malik al jami' al khalq. The one who owns everything that is created. It's a min al ants from the human beings. What, what, what jinn? From the jinn. With Malaika, the angels, with the Wabi, and all of those creatures that <coughs> wander on earth from the sea and on land, him, and other than them. And why they said, him, him, yani, yudullu ala al ashjar, with jibal, with sahab, now, the trees, ashjar, with jibal, the mountains, with sahab, the mountains. They're part of the things that Allah created. Who Rabbu had the Ashya. He's the Lord of those things too. But it's emphasized an ent, a jinn, a malaika, now, for a reason. He said, Wukudu minha, and from all of these things that are created, Yutla alayhi alam. The word alam and the word alamin, alam. Everything that's created, the word in Arabic, Alam, takes that meaning. So, me, I'm part of Alam. You, you're part of Alam. The trees, part of Alam. The insects, part of Alam. The wind, part of Alam. The sun, part of Alam. The moon, part of Alam. The seasons, cold, hot, part of Alam. The vegetation that comes from the ground, part of Alam. The fish in the sea, part of Alam. The water, part of Alam. And Alam, Kullu, Yani, and Jameer, Makhluqat. Everything that Allah created, that's why it's called Alam. So he's Rabbul Alam. Alam. He said, Qala Alam wa Ents. Alam wa Ents, the world of humans. Alam wa Ents. Alamu jinn, the world of the jinn. Ila ghayri dhalik. And all of this is Imam Mahali explaining from Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. He didn't even get to ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All of this is just the beginning of Fatiha. Show you how much knowledge we don't have or that we lack. So people say, wow, all of that, but just that statement? May Allah make us humble and increase us in knowledge and make us those who are able to grasp the knowledge. I mean. He said, What if I feel Now he's getting into structure of the word. 
Unliga, Mutniani, Unliga, Yani, Tu, Yani, Flip. Ya, you because you have Allah, Allah, mean, Ya, you know, Allah, mean, after the mean is the Ya and the Noon. Like an Aslu, Allah, moon, Allah, moon. So the origin is the wild and the Noon, Allah, moon. Ain, Namduda, with the Medda, Ah, Thuma, Lam, Yani, Ma, mean, wild, the Noon, Allah, moon. That's the origin. Like a woody bat, a woody bat, a while with noon, ya in, with noon in. But the while was substituted for a ya in the noon rather than the while in the noon. So ala moon became ala mean because the while was taken away and substituted with the ya in the noon. Why did Allah reveal the ayah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, when the origin is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen? Because Alameen gives more precedence to those creation, those creation, lahum yani aqam, they have intellect. Who are the alama? Men the alama, those who have intellect. And now, yani, the Sheikh, who was the Ra'is of Marcus Tafsir, he's about to give Taqiq over top of Imam Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He says that the Arthur Imam al-Alama, Jalal al-Din al-Nahari, he starts Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He said, Lam yufassir ha. Wala siyuti. Imam Jalal al-Din, no suyuti didn't give any explanation to Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Remember, Imam Mahali, Jalil Mahali, started this tafsir from Surah Al-Tah, 18. Nobody knows why he chose to start there. Like you, you're a scholar, you want to do tafsir. You might start from Surah Al-Yasin. You may start from Surah Al-Yusuf. Allah, Allah, there's no certain way to write tafsir. He started from Kaf. 18. All the way to Nas. 18 surah ila al, al surah uh, uh, mia rabata asha. 114. Thum ma'ada ila al fatiha. Then he went back and did al fatiha. Rabad al takbir surah al fatiha. After he finished completed al fatiha, thum ma ibtada ala surah al baqarah. Then he went into Surah Al-Baqarah. Wa kamila sitta wa ishroon ayatin min al-Surah Al-Baqarah thumma tufiya. After the 26th ayat of Baqarah, he died. So when you read this tafsir from 27th all the way to the first ayat of Kaf, is Imam Jalal al-Din Asyud, his student. Anything from Kaf to Nas and the Al-Fatiha, is Imam al -Nahari. So the Sheikh from the Marcus Tafsir in Skandiriya, he said, neither Imam Jalal al-Din al-Nahari wala suyuti fassara basmillah. He didn't give any explanation to the basmillah. Why did he say that? Because Imam Jalal al-Din took the task up when his Sheikh died, Jalal al-Din al -Nahari. He could have went back and said some points, but he didn't. He said, "What well, Bismillah Tafsir Hawadeh?" The Raiz of Marcus Tafsir. He said, "It's any explanation is known. And other scholars mention it in their writing, so it's known. If you know it, there's no need to always go over it again." He said, "If you that one, meaning is something that you begin with. That's why it's at the beginning of Fatiha. It's something to begin with." في كل في يعني أول كل أمر في أول كل أمر before everything you do say Bismillah this is very important as for the statement and you'll find scholars using this and they say it's a hadith كل أمر يعني ااا 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 كل أمر ااا بال ااا 
the Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim for Abta. Every statement or action is void of the statement Bismillah Rahman Rahim. It has no barakah, has no yani fruits. There's also a wording kullu yani amran yani ghayr al ham fa huwa aqta or kama yani qir. Every statement that you don't praise Allah in the beginning, then it's cut off from any barakah. Those hadith that have that wording, they were died jiddin. It's in the Sunan Imam al Sa'i. It's in the, I believe, Miskad um, al uh, It's in the uh, Sunan Ibn Majah. Hadith died jiddin. Died jiddin means that, yuslah li shawahid. You can't bring another hadith to substantiate. But the idea is true because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of the prophets and messengers, they started their letters with Bismillah rahman rahim Therefore, it's a sunan, an anbiya wal mursaleen, li yabda bi basmillah. That you start your letters with Bismillah. Allah started every surah, illa surah al tawbah has the Bismillah. And Allah, as it was just mentioned about Sulaiman, when he wrote the letter to Bilqis, he said, Innahu Sulaiman, this is from Sulaiman, wa innahu Bismillah rahman rahim And this letter starts with Bismillah rahman rahim So it's true. You start with the Bismillah. When you drink, you say Bismillah. When you eat, you say Bismillah. Yani, Allah, before you go, al-mahal, yani, khada, haja, to relieve yourself, you go with your left foot, you say, Bismillah. Some scholars debate that, but based on this principle, even though it's not in the hadith, the Prophet said, to say, Allahumma a'udhu bika min al-khubti wa al-khaba'if, O Allah, I seek refuge in you from the male and female filthy jinn, but this principle allows you to say, Bismillah first. When you take your clothes off, although the hadith is not authentic, the chain is not authentic, وَلَكَنَ الْمَعْنَى سَحِي Say Bismillah Because jinn see you from where you see them not You take off your shirt Maybe you have a nice physique A jinn is looking through the window Maybe he's in the house Because you didn't say Bismillah When you open the door he came in She came in They're looking at your body They're infatuated If you say Bismillah Many scholars say Although oh, those hadith and the chain it's not authentic. The meaning is authentic. Allah provides a barakah for you. Allah puts the veil between you and that jinn simply by saying Bismillah. And many scholars, they mention this regarding the issue of dressing when you put your clothes to Bismillah. As Rasul used to say Bismillah. Yani, alhamdulillah, hadha mini wa What? Praise be to Allah, the one who's allowed me to dress with this. Why well, I could not have did it no way, no how. But it's a bismillah first when you take off. It's a bismillah. No how can that? He said, Huna al maqsud bismillah rahman rahim, jami'u asma Allah. Here the statement bismillah, it's almost like saying, in name of Allah is included when you say bismillah. Because this name Allah is a single name. It's connecting to Allah Azza wa Jalla. You see, Bismillah, His name. Al Mufrat Al Mudaf. Al Mufrat Mudaf here. This, yani, a mufrad mudaf, this is very, yani, important to understand. When you see in the book, Bismillah, the meaning of Bismillah is that a person is saying, Ana sa'atu Bismillah rahman rahim I'm about to write with the name of Allah, al-Rahman rahim If you see a person about to drink, you don't see it written, him saying, I'm about to drink, you actually see the action. If he puts the cup to his mouth, 
but was understood and as ashrabu i'm about to drink bismillah rahman rahim so the bismillah in the books it's kind of like they wrote that to express what they're doing that's why he called it meaning it's applied and attached to everything that you do so really what's understood when you read the book and it's there that person who was writing said I'm about to write Bismillah Rahman Rahim you don't see them saying that they don't write I'm about to write it but it's implied it's implied therefore we said again and this is for me, it's not from the shaykh. In English, we say, in the name of Allah. That's a bad understanding. In the name of Allah. No, it's not in his name. It's with, it's, it's with his name. With his name, Al-Barakah. With his name, Yani Al-Fadal. With his name, Yani Mada Al-Khayr. With his name, Al-Satr. Min al shaw With his name being mentioned. Rabbi Salim used to say, Bismillahi al-Ladi. Bismillahi al-Ladi. With the name of Allah al-Ladi. Ma'asmihi. With his name being mentioned, Ma'asmihi, yani, Bismillahi al-Ladi, la yaduru. Bismillahi al-Ladi. With his name, Allah, la yaduru. Nothing with the harm. Ma'asmihi shaykhun. With his name being mentioned, <coughs> la yaduru ma'asmihi shaykhun in fil awdi. Not on earth, what at this neither anything in the heaven, who is Samir al Ali. He is a Samir al Ali, the one who hears all and he knows all. So it's with his name they mention. But we in the English we wrote in the name of Allah. We tried to copy the Christians. Like we wrote the Holy Quran. Not much holy Quran. Allah called the Quran al Kareem, al Quran al Azim, Quran al Kareem. The honorable, the magnificent, the high and might and blessing and esteemed Quran. He called it Quran al Adim, the magnificent reciter. It isn't Quran al Qudus. Nah. Al Qudus, the man of holy. Taqdis, to make something holy. Now, the Qudus means Asma'illah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Allah is from the names of Allah. When they say, man, yani, al. Asma kalamihi jalla wa ala is not from the names of his speech. Now the Quran min yani kalam Allah because the Quran is the speech of Allah. So we did that holy Quran. We did that in the name of Allah. That's wrong in English and in aqidah in belief. You should be with the name of Allah because with the name of Allah you drink. With the name of Allah you eat. You don't eat and drink in His name. That doesn't even sound right in English. Say it. He said, "Put as my light to Baraku wa Taala, husna." Yani all of the names of Allah, they are, they are, in the best form. Manasirino biha, and we sit here again. It's important. That's why this whole thing of reading books and thinking we know in English, it's taaban. It's, it's like shut up. Look at this. The Sheikh said, "Put luhadi nasirino biha." All of this we use to seek Allah's assistance. What? By His name. You mention his name. But you don't get that when you see in the name of Allah, the most gracious. You, you don't even get that concept. So this Ali, Imam al Mahali and Imam Ali Suyuti, they didn't give any explanation. So the Shaykh is not really giving an explanation, but he just touched on a little bit some benefit so you can understand the greatness of Allah's name, Allah. He said, Alhamdulillah, and then Mahali said, Jum Khabariya. It is a, a, a sentence that gives you information about your Lord. He said, Allah <coughs> It is a type of praise that you give to Allah, and it's only for Him. He said, because Allah is the owner of everything that's created, so therefore, He has the most right to be praised in that regard. 
not that you say anything bad about Allah. He said, I almost hate and Yahmaduhu. Or he has the most right that you Yahmaduhu. So here, the Shaykh is giving a difference that the, 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 the Ra'is, the head of Marcus Tafsir, he did mention what Imam Mahali said. He said, Tana ala Allah. Praise Allah. But then he said, Out with the Hikr and Yahmaduhu. Yani, that Allah has the most right that you either uh, simply say something good about him or feel good about him, which is Tana, or Out and Yahmadu. And Yahmadu deals with the word Ham itself. As many scholars said, that Ham is not Tana. Some of them say ham is tana. And this is, again, the language, the issue of Arabic. You have to understand. If you say ham means tana, then that's right. Because tana means, yani, yuthna ala, yani, wahid bi kalam khayr. That you dispatch about someone goodness. That's tana. But you could say Tana ala Rajulin so and so. Say good about a man who so and so. You could say Hada Rajlu Yusna alayhi khayr. That person has been praised with good. But now, if Allah tests that person, tomorrow he may be the person that La Yusna alayhi yani khayr. That you don't say good about him. So when you talk about creation, Tana is limited. Maybe you might use na ala shoksan yom wa yom kiru alihi yani ba'al bukra. You praise him today, but then tomorrow he's not worthy of that praise. Amma Allah, use na alihi daiman wa abadan. He's always the one worthy of that type of. Um, Speech when we say again tana is to say something, think something, uh, uh, reference something good about someone. Notice I didn't say somebody because if you say somebody, now you're making a lot like a human. You could say someone. There's a lot of people. Allahu ahad. Allahu al wahid qahar. He is the one and the one who is mighty. You could say someone. Don't say somebody. Because now you're making a lot, you know, that, that, that's close to like saying the man upstairs and say someone. Um, Alham, the scholars agree. Alham, Laysa li ahadan illallah. So you can't say, um, uh, Hamdu uh, ala ahmed. No, you say, Tana ala ahmed. You can't say, uh, Nahmadu. And the view Kareem. Nah, you say Nahmadu Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is the difference between Tana, we would want to use that word to praise, and Ham. Tana could be for humans, it could be for Allah Azza wa Jal, and for humans, maybe you use it today for someone, tomorrow you don't use it, but Tana for Allah, you always use it. And ham is only for Allah to barak wa ta'ala. So the mean is mutakari, mutakari, uh, 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 mutakari ba, mutakari ba. They are close, the meanings. But ham is more restricted to only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's one of the points that the chairman of the Marcus Tafsir is bringing out. That Imam Jalal al-Din, Siyuti, and, and Mahali, they didn't bring out. He said, Alhamdulillah, the shaykh who's given the ta'liq, he said, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So that's clear. It, it carries that meaning. And this, yani, you'll find Allah as you mentioned in the Quran with regards to Tana. He said, Wa Tana Allah subhanahu wa Tana Allah as you just, that's mahi. And with regards to the blessings, you're praising Allah because of the ni'mah, the gifts, the different things that Allah has chosen. 
He's given us air, so you say Alhamdulillah. He's given you faculty to see, to taste, you say Alhamdulillah. You wouldn't praise somebody who does bad. And therefore, the Prophet has said, Mukhairun, yani kullu, yani figure day. All good is in your hand. Was shown, they say, Ilayhi. And we don't attribute evil to Allah. But out of his wisdom, he's created some evil. But he doesn't want evil for us. That's why, again, you say, Alhamdulillah. He only intends all good for you, even if he tests you with something. It's because he intends out of that test something good for you. And this is part of the concept and the meaning of saying Alhamdulillah. He said, the Shaykh, when he said, he had jumped to Qabriya, it is a sentence that's given information. He said, It's telling you about Allah. That's why he said, Alhamdulillah is a sentence giving you information about Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mustahaqqa wa mustahaqqa la'ibad wa mustahaqqa l'ham. He has the right to be worshipped and to be praised. Those two points are very important. He said, He said, Rajahuna Allahuna Istiqa. It is showing Allah has the right. That lamb, when you say Alhamdulillah, that's why you should say Alhamdu Allah. La, Alhamdulillah. That lamb, that is Roger, it said the strongest position, that lamb shows that Allah has the right to be done. That word that comes before Allah, Alham. It's the right of Allah. He's most deserving of it. So when we say Alhamdulillah, that lamb has to be read, it has to be stressed, it has a meaning. If you say Alhamdulillah, you don't mention the lamb, it changes the meaning. If you say Alhamdulillah, you change the meaning. It's Alhamdulillah, you hear the lamb? Alhamdulillah, the lead, the lamb. يعني هو مستحق لجميع المحامد All praises from all of his creation All types, all sources Allah Azza wa is the one who has the most right to that praise Subhanahu wa ta'ala What time is it? 9.15 Say He said Wallahu alimu Tayyip So this part is very important Allah alimu ala ma'bud. Alimu ala ma'bud. This Allah, Allah alimu ala ma'bud. The best way, because this is when they said you can't translate everything. Some translation is word by word. Some translation is by meaning. Some translation is by uh, context, grammar. Some translation it's by uh, principality. There's different types of translation. Some of this you can't bring over to English. Allahu alimu ma'bud. Allahu alimu. This is a type of uh, ism, alim. Ism alim. Nana is giving you information about something. If you say Muhammad or have ism alim. If you say Ahmed or have ism alim. It's giving you information about. That individual. Allahu alim mahbud. It is the most common and the most known name of Allah to show that he should be worshipped. Because you have uh, stages. You have la ilaha. But the word ilaha, the origin of ilaha is alaha. So you have ilaha. The Ali with the hands in the castle. Then you have the lamb and the ha. Ilaha. But if you take the hamza for pronunciation purposes, put it at the top and put the fatha at the top, ilaha becomes alaha. So the order of ilaha is alaha. 
The meaning of Araha in the Arabic language means ma'bud, something that's deified. So that's why Allah says, La ilaha illallah, because ilaha means something has to be Araha. Lazim likun shayin ma'budan. Something has to be reverence. Something has to be deified. Something has to be asked, depended upon, invocated. What is it? Allah. So that's why the Sheikh said, Allahu, Allahu alimu ma'bud. Ma'bud. Wa laqdu jalala. It is the most loftiest name out of all the names of Allah. Why? Because it represents the ubudiyya, the worship of Allah, because ilaha, the origin is alaha, and alaha means ma'bud. That's why they say, la ma'buda ihaqqan illallah. That word in itself in Arabic shows everything else is falsely worshipped. Just the word ilaha, because the origin is alaha. What يعني as the Sheikh is saying, Allah what Adam that Allah ilahiya. So basically, what this means that every name of Allah, Ar Rahman, Rahim, Al Salamu, Al Mu'minu, Al Mu'minu, يعني Al Azizu, Al Jabaru, Mutakabir, Al Muqid. Al Aziz, Al Sami', Al Alim, Al Hakim. All of those are intrinsically from Allah. But you can't say that Allah is from Ar Rahman. La, because the greatest, most single name for Ilaha is the origin Allah. So Allah names come from the origin Allah, Allah, that's why it's an extra lamb. The ha is still there in Ilaha, but you have more than one lamb. If you look at Ilaha and Allah, there's only one lamb. With Allah's name, there's two lambs. And the Shadda. But the ha is there and the alif is there, just like in Ilaha and Allah. So this shows that Allah Azza wa Jal La ma'bud bi haqqin ila Allah and out of all his names Allahu is the greatest of his names it's greater than Ar Rahman Ar Rahim yani Al Al Malik Al Malik and kullu asma'ihi yushtaqu min laqtu jalala Allah and all those other names you can find the name and the description in the meaning of Allah itself. But you can't do the opposite. A Rahman in it is the yani, name and attribute of Allah. No, it's the other way. And that's why they say, Laqtul Jalala. Laqtul Jalala, meaning it's the loftiest name out of all of his names, Allah, who <clears throat> in the Quran, in the Sunnah, in the Arabic language. It said, "Bukula asma'i ukhwa ta'ti min Allah." So you call Allahu Rahim, Allahu Aziz, Allahu Hakim. Kula ha ta'ti sifat li hada ism a'lam ism yani yani a'lam mufrad Allah. Now, so and that's why in one of the proofs, if you look at the Quran, and we'll we'll stop here. I wanted to mention another point, but I'll save it for the next class. There's a hadith, inshallah, that's relevant to the Quran and Bukhari. But if you if pay attention when you read the Quran, the Mus'haf, you'll find, Inna Allah Rahim, Inna Allah Azizun Hakim, Inna Allah Tawwabun Rahim. You're always going to find, in Allah, Allah is, and then the other names come after. In Allah, Allah is, and then the other names come after. In Allah, Ghafur Rahim. Allah forgive his Al Ghafur Rahim. In Allah, Samiun Ali. Allah is when he hears everything and he knows everything. In Allah, Azizun Hakim. Allah is the one who's almighty, all um, revered. 
and he's the one who has the knowledge and the wisdom behind everything. But you won't find in al Hakima who Allah. You won't find it the other way around. Why? Because every name and attribute yushtaku min laktu jalala Allah. Every name and attribute comes from Allah's name and not that Allah comes from those other names of Rahman and Rahim and like this. And that shows you the greatness of that single name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll stop here, inshallah ta'ala. So we didn't take Rahman and Rahim. We just took the Bismillah, which Imam al and Imam Suyut, he didn't give explanation to. But the uh, Sheikh from the Marcus Tipsir, he just touched a little bit. Everything you heard up to now was um, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The, the Yani, uh, 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 that which Imam Mahali called it Jumlatul Qabriya, a sentence giving you information how great and how magnificent the information about your Lord, Rabbil Alameen, Hada Sussabak and Nabina Muhammad. Any questions? Hey Siri. Okay, you could they could try to stop. Hey Siri, turn voice.